Hey guys, Dylan Loomis here. Thank you for choosing this episode. Tesla has said that all cars being produced and purchased today are already future-proofed for a full self-driving future. It's because it, 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 at first it seems improbable. How could it be that Tesla, who has never designed a chip before, would design the best chip in the world? But that is objectively what has occurred. Not, not best by a small margin, best by a huge margin. It's in the cars right now. All Teslas being produced right now have this computer. We switched over from the NVIDIA solution for SNX about a month ago, and we switched, switched over uh, Model 3 about 10 days ago. All cars being produced have, the, have all the hardware necessary, compute and otherwise, for full self-driving. I'll say that again. All Tesla cars being produced right now have everything necessary for full self-driving. All you need to do is improve the software. With the software as the bottleneck, the hardware is ready to handle whatever the software will ultimately require of it. In this episode, we'll dive into what this system is composed of and take a look at the cost reductions Tesla has made over the years with their ASIC chips. ASIC is short for Application Specific Integrated Circuit, a fancy way of saying a customized chip for a specific use as opposed to a general purpose use. Remember this term as I'll refer to it a few times. You'll also understand what Tesla's objectives have really been with their vision and sensor suite. The most advanced hardware available or the most affordable. There are many companies involved in reverse engineering advanced technology, but none quite like System Plus Consulting. They've developed a smart methodology combining data gathering, technical expertise, and industry knowledge. Year after year, this small company has succeeded in becoming a major partner in understanding the technical choices and market strategies of worldwide leaders like Apple, Intel, Qualcomm, and now Tesla. Their ability to open each system, identify the different parts, evaluate the related costs, and connect the dots to the status of the industry is unique. With the help of their strategic partner, Yold Development, they have become a key resource in the semiconductor and ADAS space. ADAS is just short for Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. They recently performed a Tesla Model 3 teardown to see what's under the hood, if you will, as of today. Thanks to the introduction of Tesla's proprietary SOC, or System on Chip, introduced last year, they stated customers buying the full self-driving package would get a hardware 2.5 to hardware 3.0 retrofit with a service center appointment. An SOC is an integrated circuit that integrates all or most components of a computer or other electronic system. Typically, these components are a CPU, memory, input and output ports, and storage, all on a microchip. Tesla is using eight cameras, one radar, and 12 ultrasonic sensors. The main forward camera has a max distance of 492 feet or 150 meters. The camera suite is rounded out with a forward camera, two forward-looking side cameras, a wide forward, two rear-looking sides, and a main rear view. These eight cameras can provide 360 degree visibility around the car within an 820 foot radius and the 12 ultrasonic sensors complete the vision system. And real quick, who else is with me in desperately wanting Tesla to include the 360 degree camera feature? Please let me know below that I'm not the only one. This system allows the detection of hard and soft objects a feature that LiDAR has struggled with to date. The package also includes a forward-facing radar system that provides additional data about the surrounding environment on a redundant wavelength that can be seen through heavy rain, fog, dust, and beyond other cars. Sonar is also used to detect obstacles in a 26-foot radius around the car, which works at any speed and controls the blind spot monitoring. The data collected by the sonar is used by autopilot to manage automatic lane changes as well. This is then paired with GPS, which is used to detect the position of the car with regard to the road. 
Tesla has developed a tri-camera module with the on semiconductor image sensors that are based on the same 1.2 megapixel sensors that were released in 2015. On Semiconductor is a former Fortune 500 supplier company having dropped into the Fortune 1000 in 2020. They're based in Phoenix, Arizona and booked $5.8 billion of revenue in 2018, which resulted in $629 million of net income to give you an idea of scale. System Plus CEO Romain Frau noted these sensors are low cost and are neither new nor of high resolution. For more context, let's compare this to a tri-cam module designed by ZF, which is used by BMW in their X5. Their SCAM4 uses mobilized IQ4 vision processors, but this has an estimated cost of $165, according to System Plus. Tesla's tri-camera is estimated to be $65, or $100 cheaper per unit. This may not sound like much, but when you consider 500,000 annual sales, that's a $50 million savings each year. For radar, Tesla uses a module from Continental. Inside their ARS-4B is a 77 gigahertz chipset and a 32-bit MCU provided by NXP Semiconductors. NXP and Infineon are the undisputed two largest players in the automotive radar market when it comes to chip companies. The Continental ARS-4B can be found in numerous other vehicles, including the Audi Q3, Volkswagen Tiguan, and the Nissan Rogue. This system is used for forward collision warnings, emergency brake assist, collision mitigation, and adaptive cruise control. Tesla used the radar from Bosch in the earlier era hardware 1 and 2, but with hardware 2.5 and on, they made the switch to Continental. Comparing the spec sheets, the Continental radar is more accurate at speed measuring, slightly longer in detection range, 170 meters versus 160 meters, it's slightly larger, 130 grams versus 190 grams, and consumes marginally less power, 4 watts versus 4.5 watts. I was unable to find any reliable data on the cost difference associated with this radar change, so if any of you are privy to that information, please divulge that with us all below. Also in this Model 3 teardown, we learned that Tesla has developed a custom liquid-cooled dual computing platform composed of its autopilot ECU and infotainment ECU in one module. ECU is short for Electronic Control Unit, and the software or firmware runs on the ECU, essentially acting like the system's brain. The cost savings moving from hardware 2.5 to 3.0 was $160 per unit. Of course, Tesla invested in R&D to design their own full self-driving computer, but don't worry, we'll cover that shortly. With hardware 2.5 that was introduced on the S and X in August 2017, Tesla's autopilot was still enabled by NVIDIA's SOCs and GPU, specifically the NVIDIA Drive PX2. Then, after years of rumors, Tesla released its own AI, hardware 3.0, after hiring prominent chip architects, including Jim Keller, who has since left Tesla. One important thing to note about Tesla's Hardware 3.0 is that they have fully redundant systems in case one system fails, so there's actually two computers running and can immediately shift to the other if one fails. Hardware 3.0 has an extra 65 components relative to Hardware 2.5. Once more, if you take the $160 savings per unit for the entire CPU from Hardware 2.5 to 3.0, and multiply that by 500,000 annual car sales, you'll get another $80 million in savings annually. As mentioned previously, Tesla creating their ASIC hardware 3.0 was not free. The estimated design cost of this project was roughly $150 million. To determine the return on investment, you take the $90 difference between the cost of the chips used alone in each respective system. $280 for hardware 2.5 that used three NVIDIA SOCs, an NVIDIA GPU, and an Infineon MCU, and then $190 for hardware 3.0 that uses two ASIC Tesla SOCs. 
Multiply that $90 savings by a 400,000 unit annual run rate to get an annual savings of $36 million for Tesla's financial return for developing their own chip in-house. This means it would take around four years to break even, assuming no changes in component pricing. After approximately the four year mark, the cost savings of Tesla's custom SOCs will increase relative to the prior NVIDIA system with each passing year. It's important to clarify that automakers internally designing their own ASICs for their vehicles is incredibly rare. Without a talented design team and elite hardware competency, this endeavor is a big risk. For any automaker looking to keep good margins and striving for volume production, ASICs make sense, but the decision to invest to develop it will still be a tough one. If OEMs don't want to continue price negotiations with chip vendors, they'd be well served to control their own destiny by creating their own SOC, but they would need to find and obtain the proper talent. Of course, most companies out there are trying to continually make improvements, but no one takes risks like Tesla with the talent that Tesla has, and that's a huge reason why no analyst has a firm grasp on the true long-term value and impact Tesla will have on the world. If you take the $130 million in annual savings from the tri-camera and full self-driving chips alone, you can reasonably project that Tesla has managed to save upwards of $250 million annually just from seeking cost-effective solutions with the processing power to accomplish the end goal of a fully autonomous future. This Model 3 teardown reveals that Tesla's primary design goal with the Vision and Sensor Suite was actually to reduce the cost of their ADAS, making the model affordable, according to System Plus CEO Romain Frau. So while the average consumer thinks Tesla and then thinks cutting edge technology in every aspect, this is actually only accurate in some, albeit most, applications. Tesla is also aggressively focused on driving down prices where they can without sacrificing performance or safety, and they have managed this balance incredibly well. The thought of any legacy OEM coming close to how well Tesla has done this with talent chosen historically to produce ICE vehicles with bare bones software is honestly laughable. They should be able to get an adequate software enhanced vehicle on the road, but to really challenge Tesla in any technical area seems a long, long way off. What do you guys think? I know some of you are well versed in this area and can add to the information presented here and I'd appreciate it if you took a moment to do so to add value to our community. Thank you to everyone who made it this far. You guys must have a little tech nerd in you like myself. I'm glad to see I'm not alone. I really do hope that you learned something new and derive value from this episode. If you did, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. You can support the work I do here on Patreon for as little as $3 a month. The link is in the episode description below. I'll see you guys tomorrow for some Tesla news.